I don't know if you can hear me over the fan, but today we're going to be fiberglassing this piece of our Sidewinder missile. This will be attached to our Seeker nose cone in the front. But um, what I'm doing here is a little bit of a little bit of both worlds. I'm using the uh, tubular fiberglass, which just slips right over the tube, which is really nice and easy. But then I'm going to use a standard mylar plastic wrap and leave everything right on here some people use a shrink wrap but i didn't have any good luck with that i burned holes and then i did it too quick whatever the reason it didn't come out very well for me so i'll speed this up a little bit but we're going to be using our west system 105 and 207 over this fiberglass that's strapped over this tube and made real tight Okay, so we're going to paint this on, then we're going to put on the plastic, and uh, we're going to let it sit overnight. Hopefully we get a nice fiberglass cardboard tube. So, yeah, here we go. Here's our mixture. We're using a disposable brush. And, you know, don't be afraid to, you know, soap the material. The idea is that you soak this right through. It should be almost invisible to the point where you're seeing the tube and not seeing the material that's over the tube, the fiberglass. As you can see, it's starting to turn dark already. And we're going to continue to paint this on and soak this real good. Even if you do a little bit too much, when you do the Mylar wrap, plastic wrap you're going to squeegee out all the bubbles you also squeegee out any excess epoxy that you have put on here if you did too much so not a problem if you got a little bit too much on here but Do want to make sure this is soaked all the way through you should see no white spots really that's what you're looking for if you see see in any white spots so now when i turn this see the dark that's starting to absorb into the material and to get this completely soaked you probably need five or six pumps of each of the west systems epoxy hardener and uh, an epoxy mix so don't be afraid to use it and get this thing soaked you can always go over it with the brush again and smooth it out where you have too much on or whatever what I also did was I put a horizontal line on this tube so that when I go to put my mylar plastic wrap around and squeegee out the excess I have a nice straight line always use rubber gloves and always have something underneath like plastic to catch your drips because you are going to drip and it looks like I may have to mix more of this epoxy, so we'll see in a minute here. You can fast forward if you like, uh, but try to hang with me as long as you can. To get the real idea on what it takes to fiberglass a cardboard tube. You know, and high power rocket guys, we do this for extra strength. A lot of times after separation, parts might bounce together and kink cardboard. It's just not strong enough sometimes for high power. Now, I'm not flying beyond Mach. Actually, um, I fly low and slow. Um, but still, I always like to overbuild. I want to make sure that this is not going to collapse, fray, or bend in any way. So 
The fiberglass on top of the cardboard is really cool. Makes it nice and strong. And once you get used to doing it yourself, it's not that bad. The first couple of times I ruined some expensive tubes because I just didn't do it right. But uh, once you get the hang of it, it's not bad at all. All right, I definitely got to mix more, so. Okay, we're back. We had to mix a whole bunch more. So, and remember, once you get this stuff mixed, you're on the clock. We, there is time, but, you know, just keep in mind that you have limited time before this starts to get really gummy and very hard to put on. So, make sure you mix enough ahead of time, which I didn't do. See how this is starting to run a little bit. This is why you want to keep the brush going. Now, this epoxy is, especially West Systems, it's not that cheap. You want to try not to waste too much, but situations like this you can't help that too much you have a tendency to mix a little more than you need which is not a bad thing okay so this thing's starting to look like it's getting wetted out real nice and give it a chance to soak in because it may look like it's not coated right, but it's just trying to soak in. Keep this rotating until I get that mylar on in place. You want to make sure that there's no not too much epoxy in one spot. start squeegeeing this stuff out. You want to make sure it's on there at equal amounts. It does tend to run to the bottom, of course. And make sure your edges are done well. It should be wetted out enough that we can do the mylar now. So what we're going to do, I got a horizontal line right here. And we are going to clean this up a little bit. Got a mylar sheet. I want to make sure it's clean. And if you have a little bit of dirt or something on it, that's not too much of a problem. But I still do a epoxy on here. Sure, that's off there. All right. So this is the uh, this is the tricky part. <laughs> so here's my mylar film. I cut this so it's the right length and overlaps about a half inch on the other side. In a minute, you're going to see why you should always wear gloves because when you first put this on, the tendency. <clears throat> to get epoxy on your hands. So, what we're going to do, we're going to start slowly. At the very top where I just hung it, and we're going to work the bubbles out right here first. We can work them out to the top, out to the side. And you'll be able to see the bubbles. Make sure you got good light too so you can see what the heck you're doing. But now that I got the very first part in, 
I'm going to roll this slowly and I'm going to use plastic squeegee to roll out all the bubbles. And if you do this slowly enough, and don't roll the mylar on too quickly, go from your line, work your way down. If the mylar shifts a little bit, that's not a big deal as long as it's still in line. And even if you got some high spots, it's better than having bubbles. So we're going to continue to turn this. I'm going to put that mylar on here. And continue to roll those bubbles out of here. If you take your time with this, there's a lot less sanding involved. Because the bubbles really make it hard. And you got to fill them to get a nice smooth finish. You'd have to fill where the bubbles are because the epoxy didn't sit right there. Still a little bit more material on this side than on this end. And you will have a little bit of a seam to sand down, but that's better than not having enough material. Be okay. Now, if you get too much epoxy on this, um, alcohol thing for it. I'm afraid to soak alcohol. This is good for cleanup too with any epoxy. But if you get too much on your hey all of us rocket guys right we know sanding is our life. We try not to but it is. Alright so let me take a look at this one more time. And again, cleanup is pretty easy with a little bit of alcohol. But see, if you look carefully, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but there are some bubbles that are showing here. And you, what, what happens is after it dries, you see the material, and you kind of have to fill it. And then sand it, and then fill it, and sand it, and fill it, and sand it to get rid of the smallest like bubble, which is very annoying. That's why the more that you work on it now, the better off you'll be in the end here. And I use this because even with the mylar on it, I don't want the epoxy just to sag to the bottom. So what you do, get this hooked up. In. Now, some people use this without using mylar at all um, and just let the thing rotate until it's cured. But I like to do both and just to make sure. There we go. Let's see if this works. There it goes. So a little rotisserie thing for like ten bucks from Amazon, uh, from uh, eBay, and I got the bracket hooked up to hold it, and that'll rotate my tube. And just as it dries, it won't sag to the bottom. Uh, but we got most of the bubbles out. It looks really good. Thanks for hanging in with us. Please like and subscribe. I am in the middle of building a Sidewinder missile. I'm going to post some other pictures. Some of you have seen already. My heat seeker is done. Uh, we are gluing the fins onto the main body tube already. 
and we have our roller-ons finished, so a lot going on. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging in.